I wanted to go over those muzzle brake reviews we've been doing. I wanted to explain a little bit of things and go into some more detail on the charts and how we did the measurements. One of the values of a muzzle brake with the reduced recoil and muzzle rise is faster follow-up shots. Have you seen in my competitions? Now when it came time to compare some, I wanted to do a budget comparison of what's affordable. Quite frankly, half of these brakes I already had laying around the house from my own experimentation over time. And the other ones I ordered to test out, see how well they do. A few of them, from Tapco in particular, were advertised as brakes when they were really more of a flash suppressor. Flash suppression is an entirely different subject. What I was comparing them for was purely how well do they control recoil, rise, and total travel. Now, throughout the videos, we maintain constant distance between the camera, the barrel, and the grid in the background. That grid was just drawn up using graph paper. Uh, it's not a set known distance or unit of measurement for recoil or rise. But because we set a baseline with no attachment, we were able to use our own units of measurement. The same ammunition was used for each shot, same shooter for each shot. They were all done on the same day in an indoor range, so there were no variables as far as different loads, different shooters' abilities. Obviously when Erica shoots, recoil is different than when I shoot. I'm taller, my center of gravity is higher, I weigh more. All of these things go into play, that's why we kept with the same shooter every time. The other part is the AK has two recoil impulses. First one is after you fire, the explosion going off the, of the round, torching off, and the second one is when the bolt slams on the back of the receiver. To give you an example, clear. These bolts are hefty, and they hit the back of the receiver with quite a bit of speed. Uh, that causes a little extra rise. If you watch in the videos, you can actually see uh, the initial barrel lift and push from the firing, and then it seems like there's a pause and another push and lift, and that's when all this weight slams back on the rear. There are aftermarket rubber pieces. Uh, they go back there. I've used them in the past and found they marginally reduced recoil. Uh, they're advertised mainly as preserving your receiver uh, from by absorbing a lot of that impact. Uh, whether or not that affects your actual muzzle rise, I can test for you if you'd like. If so, let me know in the comments below. I stopped using them, mostly because they're prohibitive for using the safety bolt hold open. The bolt simply wouldn't go back far enough to be able to use a safety lock open. So to show you the way the measurement worked is I looked at the exact same point on the rifle every time between shots. This helped us compensate for different length of muzzle brakes, different size of muzzle brakes. Because a longer muzzle brake has more leverage, measuring from the tip there gives a bigger arc than a shorter brake. So that's why we chose just under the end where the cleaning rod usually stops. Raw improvement over naked. Yes, naked is our term. So what we see here is simply the difference between what the naked barrel movement was and the particular brake's movement was. Out of these, it's pretty easy to see that the dominator was by far making the biggest difference. Uh, we can also see that the uh, M16 style brake didn't help much at all. Um, we can see that the spoon increased recoil. The reason why I measured rise and recoil separately was one, it made the math easier to figure out total travel by doing the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, yada yada. Uh, but the other was, uh, for some people, rise is more important than recoil. Uh, larger shooters like myself, I don't care how much it's slamming me in the shoulder, but I do want that follow-up shot to be right on target. Other people might enjoy the AK-74, think the AK-47 has a little too much punch in the shoulder for them. They can look for a break that's got more recoil reduction. Okay, the improvement per gram chart. Uh, what we did here was measure in gram units. I am one unit. I'm just kidding. Uh, I divided the 
improvement by the total weight of the brake as put on the scale in grams. Uh, what this did was give us an idea of efficiency for the amount of metal you're putting on the end of your barrel. Uh, for some people, weight doesn't matter. For others, it really does uh, in quick handling or wanting to uh, maneuver quickly with the rifle. Having extra weight at the end of the barrel does make a difference and can be a bit of a drag. Uh, so we see here that even though the Dominator, which had such great impact on uh, rise and recoil control, is a heavy break, whereas the slot, uh, which doesn't weigh very much, suddenly looks better because you're getting more for your gram added to your barrel. That's the point of that comparison. This one, improvement per dollar, shows us what you're getting with your money. The higher the scale, the better. Uh, effectively, we're looking at dividing the improvement made by the total cost of the break. Uh, this is where the Dominator fell because it's relatively expensive for what you get. Now you still get that superior rise and recoil reduction, but per dollar not worth as much. Whereas the, the classic slot at only $19 gets you quite a bit for your buck. Originally I had done this in a different format. Dollar per improvement. Uh, this showed how cost effective uh, directly the brakes were, uh, but it was pointed out to me this chart can be a bit confusing and uh, the M16 brake being more of a flash hydrant than anything was so grossly inefficient that it threw my scale way off. Here's the overall rankings. Uh, this is a bit visually intensive, but I want to explain it to you and then I'll go over them. So what we see here in the overall rankings was since there were nine brakes tested, I ranked them one through nine. The best of each category got nine, the worst got one, and that's how we got this lateral growth here. Um, these bars that you see consist of the average, the recoil, the rise, travel, cost efficiency, and gram efficiency. Uh, so it's important that you look at the individual numbers in the bars and not just the total length of the bar. So now, to give you a simpler way of looking at it, all around, what is the best break for the weight, for the money? That's the average score. I averaged those scores previously shown between rise, recoil, cost per gram, or gain per gram. And uh, what we see here is the average of those five scores. Uh, uh, slot so. and Dominator came out on top. Even though the slot was 19 bucks and the Dominator 60 bucks. Uh, the average of their scores, because of those performances, the Dominator being so effective, uh, they st it still scored highest. Um, M16 and Razor, even the Cage, uh, those were more of flash suppressors than brakes. They were advertised as a brake, so I tested them like a brake, and as you can see down below here, uh, they failed miserably. So now to break them down um, per ranking, one by one. The slot by Tapco. This is one I've been running uh, for a couple years just from my own previous non-scientific comparison as to what I felt I was getting out of each break. Um, what I like about the slot, um, we had the best recoil reduction, we had the best travel control, we had the best cost efficiency, and the highest average score. All around a good solid win. Things I don't like about it, um, mediocre gram efficiency, so it's not the most for the weight you're putting on the end of your barrel, but remember it's still overall a rather light break. So good solid win, cheap, does its job well. How many second it uh, is the Dominator. Visually very impressive break. Uh, it's got those nice tines for shredding up your range bag or the interior of your car or jamming into a wall uh, or door if you're doing the tactical stuff. But uh, let's be honest, most of us are either plinkers or mild competitors and if anything those points are going to cause trouble for us. So <clears throat> Dominator had the most rise reduction which makes a lot of sense with those massive ports up front uh, venting gases vertically. Excellent travel control and good recoil control. Um, this one when you put on the rifle you definitely felt a difference. 
things I didn't like about it, cost efficiency for one was poor, ranked fourth out of nine, uh, that being that five of nine, the majority, were more efficient for the dollar than the Dominator. Uh, this one was the most expensive tested at $60, which I consider pushing the limits of a budget break. I know there are breaks out there for $200, there are also breaks out there for $9. I was looking for something that you might be willing to pick up from Amazon or a gun show and not care about. Next break we have is the Demon, um, also visually effect, uh, impressive. It was great um, for the weight, it's a, a very lightweight break and um, did incredibly well for what it weighs. Um, it had good travel control, uh, however poor rise control, and this makes sense when you look at the design, the ports go all the way around. If they wanted better rise control, underneath the barrel uh, could have been closed off. It was also mediocre in the cost efficiency department. The next few all scored about the same. I didn't go through and rate and talk about all of them because the ones that were just grossly inefficient were a waste of your time and a waste of my time. But they show you that not all brakes out there work. Uh, so the AK-74 style by Tapco, uh, this is one that I've been running on several of my rifles just because it felt like it worked and it came on the rifle. So this was um, excellent cost efficiency. You get quite a bit for what you spend. Uh, now keep in mind that there are more than one maker of AK-74 style brakes out there and they're not all created the same. Some have an internal chamber, some of them don't. Uh, that's where you see your more expensive ones. Um, this one still had the roof and internal vents and the two top vents. It was close enough to the, the real one, so I just ran with it. Um, it had decent rise and travel control. Overall, it, it keeps you about there. And as uh, you may see in this clip, it works just fine for me on my AK-74. What's not so hot about the Tapco, you got mediocre recoil control and mediocre gram, gram efficiency. I will admit the uh, Tapco AK-74 brake is a bit heavier than any other 74 brake I've handled and that probably just comes down to the material we made it out of. Next, uh, an interesting piece, the Fishbone by akbuilder.com um, <clears throat> also has some sharp tines on the end of it for jabbing into things. Uh, I liked it for its excellent recoil control, 8th uh, place out of 9, and excellent rise control, also 8th place out of 9. So as a break, this is really doing its job. What's not so great about it, terrible cost efficiency. Uh, for the differences made, this thing costs too much. Um, and also terrible gram efficiency is quite heavy. Um, these two might go hand in hand. I don't manufacture these things. I'm not a gunsmith. I don't do any of that. So I don't know why certain things are chosen. But uh, if akbuilder.com were to manufacture this out of a lighter material, it would easily be a superior break. And um, wrapping up the end is the cage by Tapco. This thing is really more of a flash suppressor than anything else. Um, Worst rise control and poor recoil control are the negatives because it's not designed for that. Uh, it had good gram efficiency and good cost efficiency simply because it's so darn cheap and so darn light. The reason why I bring this up, even though I don't recommend it as a break, is I wanted to show you the strengths and weaknesses of the testing methods I used. This thing getting mentioned shows you that just because the numbers are, are there doesn't mean that it is necessarily a superior product. And the classic spoon by Tapco. Uh, this is what came on all the early AKs. Um, great gram efficiency because it doesn't weigh a darn thing. Um, it's probably free as in it probably came on your rifle. Um, terrible recoil control, terrible travel control. Uh, it basically affected rise and that was about it. But let's keep in mind that that's what it was designed for. Uh, was under automatic fire keeping the rifle level. level. So I hope all that made sense uh, and you got to see the actual graphs that I blurred out in the videos so that you check to see which one was better than what. Uh, this is sort of the finale that wraps things up. If there's anybody out there that wants something else tested, uh, please let me know. 
or send it to me and I'll run through the tests. If you have any feedback as to how you'd like to see these tests different in the future, also let me know. Please like and subscribe in addition to your comments below. Check us out on Facebook at GB Guns or go to gbguns.org for the blog. Thanks for watching.